a, in a tight area over a house or a deck, and it's in an area where you got to worry about, uh, you can't just fell it. I'm going to show you how you can set up and do it pretty simply without climbing any tree, just getting doing it all from the ground. You know, depending on how good my throw line is today, that'll depend on how, uh, how easy we go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a line in this tree, and I'm going to set a pulley up there so we don't damage the tree uh, using this rigging. And then what we'll do is we'll crank this tree in from the base and then uh, show you the power of that. And I'll, I'll show you some of the uh, some of the things to watch out for and some of the things you can uh, you can do, do to avoid any problems. You know, match your cutting technique and uh, control the speed a little bit. Probably just tie it off. That'll, be, that'll do just fine. I'll try to keep this pretty simple and then uh, if you want we can elaborate on it later how to do it even better than this. But this will be a simple fix. I see. Right. Hoist it up in the position. It's okay that we got this one What's that? No, I shouldn't I shouldn't have a problem with it. If it does, I'll I'll be a fool and tell you I was wrong. <laughs> but it shouldn't have a problem with it. Yeah, I think because it's going to sink down. This one just above that, right up to there, it's probably good. Uh, a little higher. Just a little bit. Maybe up to like another foot, because once we load it, it's going to come down. Once I tie it off. That's probably pretty good. Now, the only thing that's going to be a negative for us here is that, depending on where you anchor your rope, your line will rub around something to get to the winch unless you can structure it in a good place, but we'll just leave it as is for here. What I gotta do now is dead end this line because this is our anchor point. So what I'm gonna do is just tie a simple hitch at the base of this tree with a tail. Take a long tail and then I'm gonna tie this off. The knot I'm gonna use is a cow hitch and then I'm gonna just safety it in place. Cow hitch is really just a girth hitch, like what you would do with just a loop. It's just you're using it with, with no loop, so that's the way it's got a, it gets a, a double wrap on it. But it's just like you taking a piece of webbing loop and just wrapping it on a tree, and that's it. That's basically what a cow hitch is. Only thing I'm gonna do with this tail here is take both ends of these lines, just anchor it into the tail, and make sure that they're not going anywhere. Because this is gonna support a lot, of, a lot more weight than anything else if you. If you know what I mean, I'll show you once we get it set up. Just anchor the tail off, and then that should be pretty good. This is going to drop down now with a little stretch. Just below, just below that crotch. Then we try to straighten out our ropes and identify which one's going to be which. This is going to be the one we're going to rig with. Right here. I'm going to end up tying my throw line on that later. So we can pull it up out of the way. Because you're going to have to tie this off from the ground. What I can do, I can spike up that if I thought it was safe enough to climb. You just tie it off. I can throw into this tree, climb up, and then tie it off. So there's a lot of options here. Um, the easiest way to do this is to not do it from the ground because it's gonna, you're going to have to be pretty careful about how you set up your rope. Because all these little suckers and stuff. Uh, but well, I'll, I'll try to set it from the ground and make it make it seem a little bit simpler. But climbing up in it would be faster. If I could just spike right up on it and be done with it, it would be faster than climbing just doing it this way. Another thing you could do, like I was saying, climb off of the host tree and get up in there. Um, which would be a good idea if I was worried about it coming too quick and crashing into this tree. Um, because of the bend in it, you know, it's going to want to come across and that tip's going to break out when it gets close. So we're going to have to be smart about this when we're working. To make sure that I'm watching out for what Steve's doing or he's looking in the sky. What I'll do is just a little precautionary measure. This way, Next step I'm going to do, come over here and pre-cut it with a face cut down close to the ground, pointing to the direction.
direction that we're pulling. Then I'm going to back cut it to get it to a set where it's just a thin, thin hinge all the way across. And then I'm move out of the picture over there, hold on to that rope, and then shut the saw off, obviously, so we can hear and talk Steve through. What he's going to want to do is keep his eyes in the sky when he's cranking. He don't really need to look at the winch when he's working. He can just sit there and crank until this piece is all the way up, because most likely that tip is going to hit the branch we're rigging close to and cause it to break out before we're ready. The one thing we need to discuss before we do this, he knows the procedure we're going to use. When the pull is after I'm done, the saw is shut off, and I step away, and when I say we're ready, he can start cranking. But what we need to talk about is the idea is that keep ready and keep that top break set. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a good chance because of this, that how much decay is in this tree that that could break when we're moving it. I mean, it could snap and go the opposite direction. So me as the sawer, I'm going to cut, and if there's something goes wrong, I'm going to move away on a 45 degree angle away from my cut because if it breaks out, the top can fall on here or they go opposite direction. The proper escape route when you're fouling is on a 45 degree angle behind where you're going, either side. And because I'm usually sawing from this side, I don't even look back. I just start walking a 45 degree angle away until, it's, until everything stops moving. Once I'm out of the zone, then I, then I look up afterwards. Uh, and if, if Steve's over there and stuff starts to break out, he's gonna wanna take shelter from somewhere over there and get out of the way because things are going to break here and come down in this region here if anything goes bad right here. Everybody see that? You want to try to prepare for this before it happens, especially if it's more likely to happen like we have here. There's a good chance this could all go bad on us if we're on the job site. It could break off halfway up when we start pulling this thing in. So we got to be prepared for it. All right, why don't you guys all just take a step back out so you're out of the drop zone. You guys are probably pretty good there. Just keep your eyes open. If something goes bad, make sure you got an escape route. You know, take a look around, make sure you're not gonna get running into brush and trip and fall off. Yeah, I don't know if you noticed when we first got here or whatever. I was trying to clean up all this stuff and moving it out of the way here so it's relatively clean.